Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. And in today's session, we will be talking about autocorrelation. The topic for today's video is autocorrelation. Now, one of the important assumptions of regression analysis is that the residuals for consecutive observations are uncorrelated. What happens if this assumption is violated? If this assumption is violated and we observe that the consecutive values of the error term are correlated, it leads to a problem which is called as autocorrelation. We don't want, I repeat, we don't want the problem of autocorrelation in our regression model. That is, the error terms should be uncorrelated. The question is, how do you detect for the problem of autocorrelation? To illustrate this, I will be working on the data set called as car sales. I will click on the file menu, choose recently used data. The very first file is car sales. This is the file which you will be familiar with. I have got vehicle description, like who is the manufacturer, what is the model of uh, the vehicle, some other description about sales, resale, the type of vehicle, price, engine size, horsepower, wheelbase, width, length, curb weight, fuel capacity, mileage per gallon. And finally, I also have log sales. First, what I'll do is I will run the multiple linear regression model very quickly. Analyze, regression, and then please choose the option linear. I have to specify the dependent variable and the independent variable here. Log sales will be the dependent variable and all the other variables like four year resale value, vehicle type, price, engine size, horsepower, wheelbase, width, length, curb weight, fuel capacity, fuel efficiency, all these variables will be the independent variables. Let me draw your attention to some of the options that we have at the right hand side top corner. The third option from the top is what is called as save. Let me click on the option save. The save dialog box opens up. You can save a lot of values here. I will simply choose predicted value as well as unstandardized value for residuals. I need the predicted residual value. Let me click on continue and then say, okay. I'm not interested in the regression output for this video. Let me scroll the output window and scroll again to the extreme right side. What you see here is the predicted value of log sales, and this is the residual term. This is the predicted value, and this is the residual term. When you take a difference, when you simply subtract 2.83 and 3.2, you should be able to get the value of the residuals. Residuals are simply actual minus the predicted value. What is the actual sales value? What is the predicted value for sales by the regression model? For each of these values, we can subtract and generate the residual column. Now, why I'm showing this column is because in regression, there is an assumption that the successive values for the residual column must be uncorrelated. That is, this value of 0.42 and the previous value must not be related. If they are related, it leads to the problem of autocorrelation. We want the successive values in the residual or the error column to be completely uncorrelated. How do you detect whether or not these two values, that is the successive values in this particular column, residual column, is 
uncorrelated. To detect this, there is a very simple and a very popular statistic, which is called as the Durbin Watson statistic. If there is no autocorrelation, then the expected value of the Durbin Watson statistic must be two. I repeat, if the variables, if the values of residual column are uncorrelated, then the expected value of the Durbin Watson statistic must be two. To produce what is the Durbin Watson statistic in this data set, what I will do is I will click on the analyze menu, go to regression. The second option here is linear regression. I will not disturb the existing setting. I will choose the very first tab statistics. And once the dialog box opens up, you see a lot of options, but under the residuals, you see what is called as Durbin Watson statistic. I am interested in looking at what is the Durbin Watson statistic for this particular regression model. So I'm clicking on the Durbin Watson statistic. I'll choose continue and then click on okay. I'm able to see the output of regression. I will not be explaining R or R square in this video because that is beyond the scope of today's presentation. I'm actually interested in Durbin Watson statistic. It says my it says 1.446. The ideal value should be two. Since this value is not close to two, I can conclude that there is autocorrelation in the variable residuals. If you want further explanation of Durbin Watson statistic, what you can do in SPSS is simply double click on Durbin Watson statistic. Then you can right click and the very first option, what is this can be clicked on. The moment you click on a particular statistic in SPSS, it gives you an explanation of that particular statistic. Now, what is Durbin Watson statistic? You can read for yourself. It says it's a test for serially correlated residuals. I repeat, it's a test for serially correlated residuals. One of the assumptions of regression analysis is that the residuals for consecutive observations are uncorrelated. If this is true, the expected value of the Durbin-Watson statistic is two. We got a value of 1.4, which means that we have violated the condition for uncorrelated values of the residual column. The expected value of Durbin Watson statistic is two. Values which are less than two indicate positive autocorrelation, which is a common problem in time series data. So if you get a value of less than two, it means that there is autocorrelation problem in the data set. Values which are greater than two indicate negative autocorrelation. So this value of Durbin Watson statistic always lies between zero and four. If you get a value of two, you're safe. It is a strong indication that there is no autocorrelation. On the other hand, if you get a value which is less than two, it implies that there is positive autocorrelation the third case is you may get a value which is higher than two, indicating that there is a negative autocorrelation. The value that I am getting is 1.4, which is less than two. And therefore, I will conclude by saying that there is a problem of autocorrelation in my data set. You may ask me, so what if there is a problem of autocorrelation? Please remember three important points when there is autocorrelation in the data set. There are three important problems that this will lead to. 
whenever there is autocorrelation, the first problem that we will see is the OLS or the ordinary least square estimators will be inefficient. I repeat, the OLS estimators will be inefficient and therefore no longer best linear unbiased estimators. The second problem is that the variance of the regression coefficients will be biased and inconsistent. I repeat, the variance of the regression coefficients will be biased and inconsistent. The third problem is hypothesis testing is no longer valid when there is the problem of autocorrelation. So with this, I have come to the end of today's presentation. We spoke about the assumption of regression. We spoke about what is autocorrelation. We spoke about how do we detect the problem of autocorrelation. We use durbin watson statistic and we looked at the cutoff for no correlation. Thank you very much for watching this particular video. I request you to subscribe to my channel and share my videos with your friends and relatives. Thank you very much. Have a good day.